Hey guys, it's me, Saren, back with another Hidden Figures video. Today's Hidden Figure is Mabel Hampton, who was born May 2nd, 1902, and died October 26th, 1989. She was an American lesbian activist, a dancer during the Harlem Renaissance, and a philanthropist for both Black and lesbian gay organizations. She was a domestic and hospital worker for much of her working life, living openly as a lesbian. Born in Winston-Salem, North Carolina on May 2nd, 1902, Hampton was only two months old when her mother died. She was then raised by her grandmother, who died when Hampton was seven years old. In 1909, the seven-year-old Hampton was put on a train to New York City, where she went to live with her aunt and uncle. Within a year, Hampton ran away from that home, having been treated poorly by the family. Purchasing a bus ticket with the nickel given to her by a woman on the street from ages 8 to 17, excuse me, Hampton lived in New Jersey, working as a domestic. In 1919, she returned to New York and was dubiously imprisoned for prostitution, which she saw as being lesbian encoded, as in they picked her up for being a lesbian and charged her with prostitution because they couldn't charge her with being a lesbian. After serving 13 months of a three-year sentence in Bedford Hills, Hampton was released on condition that she stayed away from New York. Remaining in the city in the 1920s, Hampton danced in all black productions for Harlem Renaissance notables, including Jackie Moms Mabley. This artistic, political, and cultural milieu, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, provided Hampton access to other dancers, artists, and black gays and lesbians. From about 1923 to 1932, she lived in a Harlem apartment at 120 West 122nd Street, which has since been demolished, where she and her neighbors hosted parties and provided safe haven for their black lesbian friends. Hampton also performed at Harlem's Garden of Joy nightclub and the Lafayette Theater, which have also both been demolished because it isn't gentrification in Harlem brand, and socialized with the likes of stars Ethel Waters, Gladys Bentley, and Alberta Hunter. In 1932, Hampton met Lillian Foster. They lived in several Harlem apartments before moving to a fourth floor apartment at 639 East 169th Street in the Bronx in 1943. During their 46 year relationship ended only by Foster's death in 1978, they referred to each other as husband and wife. As dance work declined in the 20s, Hampton left the chorus lines. From 1948 until her retirement in 1972, Hampton worked at a Jacoby Medical Center in the Bronx. That might be Jacoby. I don't know. <laughs> Y'all know I can't pronounce anything. <laughs> she also returned to domestic work as a cleaning woman for white families in New York City, and Joan Nessel, the daughter of one of these families, went on to be a founder in the Lesbian Her Story archives in New York City. The two struck up a friendship that would later see Hampton become a central figure in the archives, which Nesley had co-founded in her Upper West Side apartment in 1974. In addition to greeting visitors and other activities, Hampton do donated excuse me, several invaluable archival materials to the archives, including a large collection of lesbian pulp fiction novels and various collected memorabilia, ephemera, letters, and other records that she had gathered throughout her career and adult life in New York. Her donation provided a window into the lives of black women and lesbians during the Harlem Renaissance. Joan Nestle also recorded Mabel's oral histories in the late 70s, realizing the importance of documenting Mabel's life story as an example of racial and sexual freedom. In these histories, Mabel discusses her relationships with women, her struggles with racism, and her identity as a black American lesbian in the 20th century. In 1943, Hampton volunteered for the New York Defense Recreation Committee. As part of this committee, she collected cigarettes and refreshments for American World War II soldiers. With only her working class income, Hampton also managed to regularly attend performances of the Negro Opera Company, so she was like a patron, as well as to contribute to the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Fund and later to various black, gay, and lesbian organizations. Oh, she was about it. In addition to her financial contributions, Hampton marched in the first historic national gay and lesbian march on Washington, which took place in 1979, and she appeared in the films Silent Pioneers and Before Stonewall. She was profiled posthumously in the documentary Not Just Passing Through. In 1984, Hampton spoke before thousands of onlookers at the New York City Lesbian and Gay Pride Parade in 1984. There, she said, 
I, Mabel Hampton, have been a lesbian all my life for 82 years, and I'm proud of myself and my people. I would like all my people to be free in this country and all over the world, my black people as well as my gay people. Oh, she let them know. She was like, um, y'all white gays be racist, just so y'all know. In 1985, Mabel was named the Grand Marshal of the New York City Gay Pride March. That same year, Mabel was awarded a Lifetime Achievement Award by the National Coalition of Black Lesbians and Gays. Hampton died on October 26, 1989 from pneumonia at St. Luke's Roosevelt Hospital Center. Mabel Hampton, a hidden figure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. There'll be links in the description box. Food for thought as always. See you guys next time. Peace.